Greetings, my friends. I am Adamu of the monadic entity of the Pleiadian civilization. I am, as always, coming to you live through my young friend and scribe, Zingdad. Today, I wish to address with you a topic which I think is really quite important. I think you need to have some comprehension of what is occurring in your reality, in the, the, the greater picture of your reality. Something that's uh, often not apparent to third density consciousnesses is the nature of time. It seems to be something implacable that simply passes by tick and tock of the clock. Time is a very interesting phenomenon and there are channels and paths that play out in time that you can more consciously participate in that you, than you currently perhaps are. So in order for you to understand this, I want to address timelines with you. I want to tell you a little bit about what timelines really are. I want to tell you about the existing timelines that are playing out in your present reality that, that have been mapped and planned since from certain perspectives since from the beginning, from before time existed. And um, then I also want to tell you about new timelines. There is a new timeline that has very recently been crafted, uh, been co-created with myself and some of you and, and, and Zingdad, obviously. Um, I want to tell you about those. Um, I want to tell you about the possibility of creating new timelines that you yourself can, can um, to take a, an active hand in the creation of the timelines that you yourself will be experiencing. So timelines, this is a core part of our discussion today. I'm also going to need to tell you about intentional loving misinformation. There have been two items of misinformation that have been imparted to you for very high purpose. Um, and and uh, it's time now for this to be addressed. It's time now for you to come to a, let's say, a more complete understanding of these two items. So that'll be in today's update. And then perhaps the most interesting, the one that will, the, the item that will pique your curiosity the most, um, I will be addressing the dissolution of the Illuminati. So all of that in today's update. So let me begin, as promised, with timelines. There is a concept available in your collective consciousness called the Zeitgeist. It's a German word, and it means something very uh, similar to the spirit of the age. There are consciousnesses, high frequency consciousnesses, that hold a plan for life. Now the way they do this is one can almost imagine them holding a vacuum into which life must flow. Except they hold that vacuum not in space, but in time. In order to help you understand this, I would like to propose to you that prior to this incarnation, this life that you are now living, you as a spirit being would have sat with your, your spirit guides, the wise ones, the masters, the bright ones that you admire and respect and, 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 and uh, that you wish input from. You would have sat with them and you would have said, I'm about to incarnate. I'm about to take flesh and I have a certain objective that I wish to achieve in this incarnation. There's a beginning point. I'm going to be born with the awarenesses that I have now and I wish to transform my awareness. I wish to awaken perhaps to unconditional love or perhaps to greater compassion or perhaps to the trust of myself or perhaps I need to heal my trust with the divine or 
whatever the case might be, you would have an objective for your incarnation and you would say, this is the journey I wish to travel. I wish to start here and through the process of this incarnation, through the experiences of this life, I wish to transform my consciousness and arrive at that outcome. And this journey from this point to that point, from beginning to end, from where I am to the desired outcome, this journey is the timeline that I will be living as an individual. It might be that you might decide that there are a number of outcomes or a number of journeys towards that outcome that you wish to experience. It might be that you would say, I wish to travel this line and have this love interaction, have this career experience, and I wish to travel that line and perhaps have no love interactions, an entirely different career experience. These are the alternate timelines. Well, the very same thing happens on a, on a, on a much larger scale, on a planetary scale, indeed a galactic scale, a universal scale. There are timelines. The individuals that work their timelines are strands. Those strands get woven together into ever greater and greater timelines. And there is a consciousness that oversees the timeline, that makes sure it flows in the direction that was desired by the players in the game. And so it is that we have, collectively, we have expressed ourselves into lives on planets beyond number, in this galaxy and beyond. And each planet has had its intention for each civilization that has arisen on that planet. Planet Earth has had a number of civilizations arise before yours. Yours is simply the latest iteration. And each time we have played this game of a civilization arising, flowering, coming to full consciousness, ascending, we have refined our view of what is a successful journey through timelines. What makes a planetary consciousness arise? And we have seen planetary consciousness after planetary consciousness, civilization after civilization. There are things that work, things that really support the awakening of consciousness. And timelines have been created to support that. So timelines are themselves conscious. They are beings. There's a someone there that is nurturing and guiding the flow of, of that whole civilization. Now I want to talk about the existing timelines that you have on planet Earth that have, as I say, been in place since before time. In order for you to understand these, I would most strongly recommend that you have a look at a document about the densities of consciousness that has been produced by Zingdad and his spirit guide, one known to Zingdad as Eight. Um, a being that I certainly can recommend that you pay attention to his words. He is known to the rest of us as Master Eight. He is a holder of, of, of the gate um, between the seventh and the eighth densities of consciousness. This is why he is called Master Eight a being who really knows what he's talking about when he speaks about densities. What we are doing is we are encouraging the awakening of consciousness through these densities, arising up through the densities. Your planetary consciousness currently resides at the third density, which means those that have arisen from the matrix are third density beings. We wish to awaken them to fourth fifth, sixth density. And so this is what's happening. Now, those of you that are listening have mostly not arisen from the matrix of the planetary consciousness. Most of you are here from outside. You have come in as star seeds, as light bringers. You've come in from other planets, from other galaxies, from the angelic realms, and from the realms entirely beyond this reality. You've come in to support this process. We're all working towards the same thing. The lifting of the consciousness from the matrix 
of third density up to fourth, fifth, and sixth density. The timelines support this, and here I want to tell you how the timelines support this. There is an understanding of, of, of a mapping of the flow. Now, up until now, you have probably, if you've been a somewhat a scholar of metaphysical matters, um, you have probably understood that there is a pattern where you flow from third density, which is a state of open choice. You haven't chosen a particular pattern. You choose to either flow according to the service to other or according to the service to self path. The intention would be that the planetary reality is, is, is held in a space of choice and then you as a spirit being come to completion. You come to clarity. My path is the service to other path. And then you climb on that path and you experience a timeline that takes you along that, along that way. Well, it's time for you to understand that we have had to introduce an element of intentional loving misinformation about this. The timelines do not diverge, service to self, service to other. They diverge according to responsibility, self-responsible versus other responsible. I want to tell you why. I want to tell you, first of all, why we have introduced this misinformation, and I want to tell you why it's now time for us to correct the information, and I want to tell you what this means, self-responsible versus other responsible. So first of all, why loving misinformation? There's a dictum in your collective consciousness which goes, loose lips sink ships. It comes to you from the Second World War. The awareness that two people who are perfectly entitled to knowledge about what is happening with the war effort could theoretically converse freely about their, what they know, about what they've understood, about what's going on in the war. But if they do, there is always the possibility of somebody that shouldn't know overhearing them and therefore causing the loss of ships on the ocean or causing a loss in the war effort. Well, the same thing happens right here on Earth. We, uh, in the higher realms, we in the, in the higher frequencies of consciousness that have been uh, communicating with you, that have been channeled, that have been addressing you, have needed to tell you about the timelines, but we have also been very consciously aware that there is a deeply light deficient agenda that is working against this process that does not want the consciousness of the matrix to arise to full divine awakening to arise to god consciousness because there the deeply dark agenda is populated by the deeply light deficient dark is something else the deeply light deficient agenda is populated by deeply light deficient beings who wish to maintain control of what is happening on the planet in a manner of speaking they are feeding upon you they feed upon your energy they feed upon your emotions um, they uh, like to have you be minions and puppets they like to be in control of you this is their agenda and they want to keep the, the whole of the matrix in a somnolent state. So if you tell them what the process is, what the paths are, what the um, potential um, streams of consciousness are, they use that against you, against the children of the matrix. They use it to, 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 to they weaponize timelines against you in that the, idea that service to self is perhaps less benevolent and service to other more benevolent has been used against you look at what's happening in the press look at what's happening in 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 in, in, in academia look at what's happening in your collective consciousness your best motivations have been used as a vehicle to 
to harm you, to harm your, your, your bloodlines, your culture, your personal sense of security. And it's been done, really, uh, to turn you against you, to turn humans against each other, brother against brother, so to speak, to have you war with yourselves so that you remain malleable and controllable. And so we are proven correct in our estimation that we should not release this information until it is too late for them to use it against you. And this is why it is now time to release this information. It's now too late. Um, this information can no longer be co-opted for negative purpose. So what I wish you to understand is that the two timelines flow according to whether you are choosing, whether you are creating for yourself, that you are either self-responsible as a, as a personality, as a being, or you align yourself with the idea of being other responsible. So what's the difference between these two? A self-responsible consciousness basically has the idea in life that if something needs to be done in my life, if I need change in my life, it's up to me. I'll roll my sleeves up and I'll do it. The self-responsible soul is looking to the pain in their own consciousness and saying, how do I heal it? How do I become a better person? How do I grow? How do I change? How do I engage my own spiritual awakening? That's self-responsibility. The other responsible soul is saying, somebody must fix me. Somebody needs to save me, fix me, heal me, change me, do for me, and, 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 and it's hands off from me. It's up to them. The self-responsible soul looks at the world and says, work is needed. Others are hurting. Out there is suffering. What do we do about it? I get involved. I get involved in responding. I get involved in finding a gift inside of myself that I can give to others. I get involved in, in helping, in healing, in changing, in a way that I am called to do. That's the self-responsible soul. The other responsible soul looks around them and says, there's pain out there in the world. Somebody better fix it. And I am going to either tell the other bodies that they must fix it, or I'm going to try and manipulate them, or I'm going to throw a tantrum for them to do it, or I'm going to in some way abuse them into doing it, or I'm going to steal and take and in this way um, get what needs to be done with other people's resources. So that's the difference between self-responsible and other responsible. Self-responsibility leads directly and inexorably to creator consciousness, the awareness that, it's, that it resides within me. It leads to an awakening that the divine is accessible within me. Self-responsibility is a very healthy path. Other responsibility, not such a healthy path, because it takes you directly and inexorably to victim consciousness, the feeling that I have no power, no authentic authority or power within me. It's all outside of me. Somebody else, a, a teacher, a fixer, a healer, a savior, a priest, a pastor, a, a teacher, a, a, a prophet, a, somebody else is responsible and has to fix it. And if you are a victim consciousness and your consciousness is very low, then you are prone to lashing out at society. You're prone to, to real anger um, at those around you, at everybody, because they're not fixing you. They're not fixing your life. Your life is broken and it's their fault. Now, why it's really quite important from our perspective, from the Pleiadian perspective, that there is a separation of the self-responsible and the other responsible, why we are um, somewhat invested in this, is that it is possible for us to engage productively and usefully with the self-responsible. It's not possible for us to, conduct, to, to, to engage productively and usefully with the other responsible. Let me explain why. If you had a population, let us imagine perhaps something around half of the planet's population, 
the self-responsible half. And they were living on a planet. We could drop into your awareness right now. We could re-resonate our light ships to the frequency you're inhabiting. And we could appear in your, in your environment. We could land on your front lawn. And we could come and say hello to you. We could engage with the structures, the, the politicians, the power players. We could engage with self-responsible politicians. And we could come and help. We could do all of this. Because when we arrived, you would say, oh, wonderful. Somebody with a, 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 an older civilization than ours, profoundly older. Our civilization is billions of years old. Yours has an awareness that reaches just 6,000 years. So an older civilization that has really learned and ironed out all of the kinks and all of the problems that we're struggling with. An older civilization with more advanced technology. You could help us. You could help us with our pollution. You could help us with the technological issues that we're struggling with. You could be an older brother to us. We could do that with a self-responsible population because you're looking to yourself for solutions, but you're open to help. When help arrives, you don't immediately surrender and just say, oh, well, you fix us. And that's exactly what the other responsible, other planet, if there were one, would be doing. If we try to arrive, there would be two responses. One is you'd grab your guns and you'd start fighting. You'd want to shoot our spaceships out of the sky if you could. You would panic. The other responsible do. They are prone to, to, to panicking. They feel victimized by everything that's going on. Hurting each other, looting your stores, creating chaos and pandemonium. Um, and if you were to get to this place of the awareness that we are benevolent and here to help, then you would immediately just say, well, then fix everything and do nothing. You'd want to just stay home and let the aliens fix your world. And the aliens must also support you and feed you and take care of all of your needs because they've got the power, they've got the tools. Which would immediately cement your culture exactly where it is. You'd stop growing, you'd stop learning, you'd stop evolving. You would effectively either become our prisoners or our recalcitrant children that just don't grow up. We have seen over and over again that there is no great benefit and much detriment from engaging directly in an in a, in a interventionist fashion with an other responsible society. So really what it means is were timelines to diverge and were you to find yourself in a self-responsible society, then you would find yourself in a society that we and, and, and the rest of the um, civilizations that, are, uh, that belong to our, 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 our federation, our, uh, there's a galactic federation of civilizations who are determined to support the positive evolution of consciousness. If you were to find yourself on a timeline with other self-responsible citizens, we would be able to engage with you. We would want to. This would serve you, it would serve us, it would serve the greater good. If you were to find yourself in a timeline with the other responsible, we wouldn't be able to. We would leave you alone. Currently, there's a mix of such diversity on the planet that we have to leave things alone until timelines diverge, until you create a divergence in your timelines. And I want to talk about that, that divergence, that moment of, of, of um, fraying of the timelines into their possibilities. I want to talk about that in a follow-up conversation. The process of the diverging of the timelines is, is called the event. And it's left open-ended like that because what the event actually is, is not fixed. It's very variable. When it happens is very variable. How it happens, over what period of time it happens, these are all variables. And you, my friends, you, Earth, humanity, 
those that come from outside and in and those that are, uh, are awakening from the matrix up, you choose. You will decide what the event will be, how it will be, and you will decide it with your deepest level of consciousness. But that's another discussion for another day. What I need to point out next is that besides these two timelines, the other responsible timeline and the self-responsible timeline, consciousness arose that at least one additional timeline must be created because there's something very special happening on Earth right now. From the matrix up, beings are awakening as we knew they would as it is the time for them to do but a very small number of them are awakening in a way that is completely delightfully amazingly surprising to explain this you know you have a part of your brain which is dedicated to speech. And because you have this part of your brain, because, because it's part of, of your, 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 your DNA, it's part of the way human babies are created, as your brain is developing, it develops a speech center, which means a very young human baby is already wanting to speak, is already beginning to speak, is making speech-like movements before they have the, the dexterity to actually make the words they want to make. You have that capacity. It's built in. Speech comes naturally to you as a human. If on a day, suddenly, your, your animal companions, your dogs, suddenly started speaking, you would be very surprised, I'm sure, because they don't have this capacity. They don't have a speech center built into their brain. And it would be miraculous if Zingdad's young friend Pikachu opened his mouth and spoke to Zingdad. It would be miraculous. Well, that kind of a miracle is busy happening with humanity. You don't have brain centers for certain talents, gifts, abilities. You simply don't have the, 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 the wetware for things that you are doing, for things that we see happening in the consciousness of humanity. There is an awakening to miraculous talents. There have always been a few that have been, had uh, the ability to engage such gifts. This is accelerating. And those that are awakening in this way would be wasted on the, on, on, on the self-responsible or the other responsible parts. These are for those beings, for those who are on this accelerated awakening path. This would be a plodding, slow journey. And so a transcendent new level of reality um, needed to be opened up. For, for those. And then also, the wanderers. Almost certainly you. Almost certainly everybody listening to this trans transmission. The star seeds, the light bringers, those that come from, from higher planes of, 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 of existence. You have gifted so courageously. You have given so much. You have risked so much. Your sacrifice has been so deep. And you have come to this planet and had the, the slings and the torments and the, uh, the pain that you have suffered as a result of incarnating here. You have shattered yourself to be here. And you've learned to love this, this planet. Many of you speak to us of your great love of nature and animals and life here. 
Though you have struggled, you have learned to love this place. Learn to love these lives. And consciousness arises that there is perhaps a better outcome for you than to simply return where you came from when this great gifting is over. And so for both of these groups, for those who are on this accelerated awakening path, and for those of you that wish it, for the star seeds and light bringers that, that wish it, there is a third timeline that we have recently opened, which I can now speak about because it can no longer be blocked. This third timeline is the unity conscious timeline. Neither self-responsible nor other responsible, but for those who have the dawning of the light, of oneness, of God, awakening, source, creator, present in their, in their being. Those who are awakening to this and want to experience a blissful, joyful life on a planet very like this, except surrounded by others who are themselves unity conscious. Surrounded by those who are wise and kind and loving. Surrounded by those who have magnificent gifts to give. That you can, in that space, really find your great gift and give your great gift. And, well, a, a, a truly a blissful experience of life. There is this third timeline. Now, this third timeline has been opened by... Zingdad with a number of, 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 of accomplices. Um, and this brings me to the other intentional loving misinformation that I need to tell you about. Recently after the, um, the demise of the ancient red vampire, uh, there was a transmission uh, from Zingdad and I about that. When, when that being died, we became aware that we need to now move to open this additional timeline. But we knew that if we are transparent and clear and honest about what we're doing, opening a timeline to a unity conscious realm, that there would be those agents of the deeply light deficient agenda who would work against this, who would make it as impossible as they could for us to craft this timeline, for us to anchor, rather, this timeline. So we, we told a story which was a lower version of reality. We told a story about creating light circles which would exclude the agent, certain demonic activity, the agencies of, of, of the Marzons. I'm sure many of you remember this. If not, Please go back and have a look at those videos. But this is, this is what we said we were doing, and it was true enough as far as it went. Creating these light circles would exclude the Marzons. But the light circles are actually timeline anchors, and they actually anchor this unity conscious reality. And we placed an anchor in Hawaii, in Los Angeles, and in New York. We needed to place these anchors across the United States. That's where they were most crucially needed. We, we will be creating other anchors elsewhere in the world. But really you only needed on this planet one anchor. And then Zingdad came back to South Africa and eight beautiful souls came and joined him for some master work. Again, a little intentional loving misinformation. I couldn't explain what we were really going to do. So I said we were going to just tell a story, and I did. I told those that came to join me, I told them the story of the galaxy, of how consciousness arises and gets to be here, and how humanity gets to be here. But that was very much a secondary purpose. The primary purpose was co-creating with these eight beautiful beings, co-creating the intention that would drive the creations of these, of these three light circles. So there is work to be done going forward. There is work for you to co-create. Um, in, in, in Zingdad's next update, he will be speaking about light circles. He will be talking about creating and maintain, maintaining light circles. He will be beginning the journey of teaching you how to create your light circle. So how to 
create and manifest your own individual timeline, how to weave that with others, how to create the vast um, high consciousness timelines. So lots of information still coming. Um, but before we can bring this conversation to a close, this rather lengthy conversation, the final word I have for you is about the dissolution of the Illuminati. The reason we can now talk much more freely is that this, uh, one can't really call it an organization, this gathering of the ancient, ancient families, the ancient bloodlines, they are aware of each other, they sometimes gather together, they sometimes even work together. They had been somewhat um, monopolized by a particular very powerful individual, the ancient red vampire. With his death, these, the, 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 these blocks of power that, had, that he had formed, that he was holding with the strength of his personality, have been shattering. And we needed to wait for the internal strife that was inevitable. We needed to wait for that to start to, to ferment. We needed to wait for um, internal conflict to create schisms and crumblings in the structure that he had built. And this is now really taking place. And I'm sure if you have, again, eyes to see, you will, you will see it in, 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 in your press reports. You will see it happening in your environment around you. The structures of power are very much beginning to conflict and compete with one another. And, and, and in so doing, um, losing coherence, losing direction. And this is a good thing. It, had this not happened, we would long ago already have had a third world war where we would have had really planetary war. There would be, there would be war everywhere. Um, America would right now be splitting up, be fragmenting. There would be civil war in, in Europe. There, uh, the, the Middle East, well, the, the Middle East would have truly ignited the Third World War would have been happening right now, except this, 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 this fracturing. And so disagreement internally as to what we should be doing and where we should be driving, the, the Illuminati, as it were, is no more. There is no more one single goal for these, for these old bloodline families. They're now all pulling in their own directions, which is more in accordance of the way it was meant to be. So, for those who are engaged in the awakening process, this is, this is good news. Um, there is more information that, that will follow in due course. Um, but next, um, as promised, next Zingdad will be talking about light circles. There's much information that, uh, that, that, that he has to share with you. Um, some of it coached by myself and, and, and other beings of, of high consciousness. Um, that's the next update. And in due course, I also wish to speak to you in a following update about the event. This is a subject that gets people very excited. The moment when, when the, the various timelines fragment from each other, that moment, what it is, how it works, and crucially, why we don't want to bring it forward, why we want to delay it. The longer it takes, and the, the greater the period of time over which it unfolds, the better for everybody. Why that is true, all of that in a following update. So I thank you for your kind attention for the duration of this transmission. I realize it was quite a long one. We've tried to pack a lot of information in without getting too technical. Um, more news coming shortly. Thank you. Until I... I'm next able to address you. I wish you love, peace, and joy. I wish that you are ever more present to the divine light that burns in your own center. Until then, I love you. 
with the heart of oneness. I am Adamu of the monadic entity of the Pleiadian civilization and I have been coming as always to you through my friend Zingdad. Goodbye.